Hello everyone, welcome to Chill Review Guy. I've got a new product here today and it's the Instant Pot and I want to do unboxing and product testing it out. So let's get to it. Alright, let's get to the unboxing of the Instant Pot. So it tells you some items that you should be expecting in the box. You get the ceiling ring, condensation collector, a steam rack, a manual, and a getting started guide. Neat. All right, let's turn. Oh. <laughs> so there you go. There's some multi-use pressure cooker guide and with some cooking timetables so if you want to know the timing chart so this is a ring like this seal a power plug and the big thing itself Instant So you get this quick guide for sealing position and the quick release button. Okay. Get the, the rack for cooking. And you get the lid or the whole container. It's free from grease and grease. Okay. Yeah, that's it's pretty straightforward. You can just Put it in and set it, and away we go. All right, so now that we have the product unboxed, let's go over how to work it. All right, so the device comes with a power cord and it plugs at the back. Also, back of the unit comes with the condensation collector and it just clips on there like that. All right, so to turn it on, you just want to plug the power cord in and the device turns on automatically. There's no on and off switch. You should hear a beeping and right now it says off. So once you have your items in, you want to line up, you'll hear a noise and you want to line up the arrow with this arrow, the bottom and the top arrows and you just slide to the left and you'll hear a confirmation beep. So looking at the top of the unit, the cover, we have a couple of things. So one is the pressure release nozzle. So and right next to it we have this metallic looking plate. It's called the float valve and there's also a pressure release button. So whenever you're cooking when you see this metallic float valve it rises above the surface then you should know that the pressure is high and you don't want to open at all 
and if you do want to release the pressure you want to push down on the pressure release button and the steam will release from here on chance you want to be careful when you release the pressure because there will be hot liquid and steam water coming out from here so i would like i like to use a mitten to release the pressure just to be safe and i think you should do that too yeah i think because uh, you whenever you're cooking if you're cooking a curry or something it has more water in it so the more water there is the more splatters will come up yep and um, you don't want to burn your hand yeah because i did the first time when i i think yeah. I, I a few drops fell on my hand so that's when i started using the mittens Mitt. yeah yeah keep yourself safe <laughs> and i just go by like so you press it and you keep like you it's pressed and you wait till the metallic thing goes down so once that is down only then open this yeah. if that is up never ever open this and at the same time i want to point that this whole surface this metallic surface on the top is really hot when it's pressured or while you're cooking so make sure you don't touch the surface as well yeah they have a safety uh yeah. so it says do not do not touch yeah and tells not, you what to do what to do all this it's better not to remove this it's uh best thing is to keep this on on this uh, top so underneath the top cover is the ring. It's like a, you can take it out after each cook and clean it up. And this can also be washed as well. You can clean the surface. There's also the release valve from the other side. It comes with a rubber stopper. So you can take out the rubber stopper and the release filter or release valve will come out. This is the floating valve. Floating valve, yeah. yes. <laughs> yeah, release floating. I like to release the floating valve. <laughs> yeah. And uh, I think the booklet says that this metallic thing also comes off, but it's it's a bit tight actually. Yeah, you need to use two fingers to pop it out of place, and you can clean it. Yes. One thing I would like to point out is after a couple of cooking sessions, we found out that the ring tends to hold on to the smell of the food that you cook and sometimes it depends on what you're cooking and it can be really pungent so we've tried a whole bunch of things to get the smell off the ring we tried putting into vinegar try putting into soap water and baking soda but nothing worked and at last we just decided to do a hot water pressure cook just to let those steam out and after that, the smell kind of died out. Baking soda also worked a little, a little bit. bit. Yeah, not but not com actually. What happened was I put it in vinegar. I washed it, then I put it in vinegar, so it soaked up the smell of vinegar. The salty kind of smell. salty kind of smell. It already yeah. had the cooking smell in it. To remove that, I put it in vinegar, but then it ended up soaking vinegar smell. Yes. And then it was like very pungent. So in order to remove the vinegar, I put it in baking soda. <laughs> and then baking soda kind of helped yeah. a little bit on removing like the extreme smell out. And then what we did was we just uh, put some just plain water mm. and did like uh, pressure boil just yeah. with water. And a couple of times after that, the smell kind of Died went down. away. Yeah, so if you're cooking savory foods, you want to maybe designate a uh, ring for that food and if you're cooking sweet foods you want to keep another ring for that so the box of the unit comes with two rings one is the white ring and the red ring so maybe you can just need one ring for one of the foods you cook yeah or just um, live with the smell yeah because i think uh, this is the viva so viva comes with the cake baking option as well so if you want to do like a dessert and some people like to cook, cook uh, rice pudding as well. Yeah. So, uh, but I haven't. I, I think I would like to keep this just for savory foods. Soups and chicken and slow cooking dishes. Yeah. Because we're, we're lazy and we just like to make those things. Yeah. We haven't tried cake yet. Yeah. But if we did, we would be using it, uh, the other ring. It comes with two rings, so we'll use the yeah. other ring for the cake. Definitely. So 
You want to get to page 19 and it talks about the initial test run and it's just a water test and you just want to clean up the system get it up and running and all you do is just run it on pressure cook for a high and for five minutes so initially we just add like three cups of water so this is the basic first thing you have to do before starting cooking in the instant pot so lid and then it says to pressure cook so right now it shows off you just press pressure cook and a timing will come i'll decrease it to five minutes that's what the booklet says five minutes and it is already on high so you can reduce these settings i mostly keep it on high and you don't need to do anything that's it so it's on now automatically uh what's happening is it's starting to warm up once it's warmed up then it will go on to the countdown so um after a few minutes when it has preheated then uh, the countdown will start and it will show here five four three two one like that yeah so then uh, once it's done um then the keep warm setting is like if you have food in here it'll keep the food warm even after the Countdown's done. Yeah, countdown's done. Um, if you have any food in here, um, like when I'm cooking, what I like to do is um, if I don't initially instantly want to pressure release, I cook the food, I leave it in the pot for a little bit, and the metallic valve um, automatically goes down after after a few minutes. So that way, like I don't have to press it to release the pressure. So we just uh, wait and see what happens. finished so it's done so it'll just keep warm here and I can just cancel that so it'll be off so the metallic thing is up that means there is a lot of pressure in it so and you can push down to release the pressure All right, so now that the float valve is down, it's safe for me to open it and drain the water. Now you can just uh, throw away this water and then you can start cooking them. So after I wash the container and the lid, I like to keep the container open just so I don't let the smell accumulate in it and it airs out over time. Uh, especially the ring, it tends to catch a lot of the smell. So you can wash the ring separately and just keep it, I leave it outside for a couple of days just to air it out. I think, uh, mm, I think anyone purchasing this should be told about the ring. Yeah. It does soak up the a smell. A lot of the yeah, smell. Whatever you cook, yeah. the smell is going to get in there. Um, so you are warned. But you can have a good cleaning dish uh, base and the lid. But all it takes is for the lid, I mean the ring. And that's that is, that's all it takes to smell the whole food. Yeah. I mean, I don't, I'm not mixed. Like my whole cooking is same. Yeah. It's it's just like a rice, uh, you know, fried rice or a curry, 
and my my all mm -hmm. all my dishes taste the same so i don't really mind if you it. do like a slow um a sweet potato then you get kind of that sweetness coming to the and then the, the weird smell goes into the Food. next dish that you're cooking right. yeah i cooked yeah. anchovies and the smell got oh, into the ring it was horrible it was horrible it was that smell that we were trying to get out nice. yeah and also yeah. the base is it's, it's not non-stick exactly um when we bought it like things do stick so so you don't want to use a uh, metal or any kind of like a uh, uh, rough scoring pad to clean it just use a soft sponge and soap and water mm -hmm. and i even use like silicone spoon to kind of move yeah. the food around i didn't use any um, wooden or metal spoon yeah it, it does scratch a bit silicone is better yeah. if you want to um, take care of it for a long time yeah, yeah. and um, i think anyone cooking like first time cookers first time uh, users should actually cook very basic things just to mm -hmm. kind of get used to of this pressure cooker yeah try it out you might uh have to play around with the timing and the settings. Water, to, especially water. water. One time I put less time. water and it was about to burn. So yeah. I think vegetables, in, like simple vegetables initially, hmm. would be better. One of the other good features about this is it has a saute feature on it. So it's similar to the pressure cook, but when you hit the saute, button you get a timer so you can set for how much time you want to saute for and it'll start right away and the good thing about it is if you want to like saute onions or, or any other things to caramelize and then pressure cook it gives you good flavor profile yeah like making dal or any yeah curries, curries or chicken curries chili or stuff whatever stuff like that yeah yeah it really helps the only thing is when you're sauteing you want to leave the cover off and just leaves a little thin. Yeah. That's it. And then once sauteing is done, then you just cancel it. Then you add whatever you want to add. Then pressure cook and it'll start again. Yep. Pretty simple. It is. Yeah. yeah. Well, I'm glad you enjoyed this video. Uh, thanks for joining us and stay tuned for more videos to come.